fruit. He that bears fruit, when you bear fruit, they prune you so that you will even produce greater fruit. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen to these seven, I call them seven deadly sins that must be purged from the church. This teaching tonight is not from a standpoint of self-righteousness, for we are all but products of his mercy. Are we together? The teaching tonight is an attempt to show us through the lens of the holiness and the purity of the Christ, the areas that we need to adjust in our lives, in our organizations, to the point that we present a bride and a church that is purified. So as I take on this, I want you to listen very carefully to any one of the seven. And as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, as I run through this list, now I'm going to bring some of the challenges and then I will prefer very quickly what is the biblical solution out of them are you ready now sin number one sexual immorality and related perversions sexual immorality please write and related perversions we'll talk about the related perversions now first thessalonians chapter four three to five the first sin that needs to be purified from the body of Christ. Give us Amplified. Let's read Amplified, then we'll read Acts 15, 28 and 29. For this is the will of God, that you should be consecrated, separated and set apart for pure and holy living, that you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. We're reading to five. That each of you should know how to possess, control, or manage his own body in consecration, purity, separated from things profane, and honor. Uh -huh. Verse 5, the last verse. Not to be used in the passion of lust like the hidden, who are ignorant of the true God and have no knowledge of his will. Give us Acts chapter 15, please, from verse 28 and 29. Amplified still. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to lay upon you any greater burden than this indispensable requirement. Uh -huh. That you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from tasting blood and from eating the meat of animals that have been strangled and from sexual impurity. If you keep yourselves from these things, it says ye do well. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to listen very carefully. Sexual immorality from time immemorial has been part of society and it extends to all the organizations and even the individuals. I want you to pay attention to this. Sexual immorality is predicated on certain facts that you must know. Please pay attention. The first thing you need to know is that the desire for intimacy i wrote here is not demonic most people have not studied this subject i have taken the time to study this issue of sexual immorality the desire for intimacy is not demonic now that is the problem with this issue of lust and immorality because other negative vices like lying and stealing any day any time lying is lying and it is bad any day any time please look up stealing is stealing and it is bad but when it comes to the issue of sexual immorality the intrinsic desire for intimacy was not put there by the devil it was put there by god so it's not a desire you can cast out of your life are we together it is only a desire that was created to be expressed within certain conditions it is the presence or absence of the conditions that make it right or wrong not the presence of the desire is someone learning now that what can be a dangerous thing right now the next moment within the right condition of marriage can become the greatest blessing or one of the greatest blessing are we together stealing is stealing lying is lying for instance but when it has to do with the issue of sexual immorality you have to understand that it was god that put the desire for intimacy in men hallelujah this is very important and if you do not understand this 
you are going to be fighting a battle that you do not even understand write this down the spirit of lust and immorality or the nature of lust and immorality is that it capitalizes it capitalizes on this blessing that god has put within men and perverts it to the destruction of the victims so it capitalizes on the presence of this desire that god has put in men and now perverts it for their destruction if you're with me say amen now sexual immorality does not care whether you are old does not care whether you are young does not care whether you are an apostle whether you are a prophet whether you are good or bad sexual immorality is not about being good or evil it's about exploiting not a weakness exploiting a provision that was put by god and if not guarded within the frame of what i will teach you you can be a nice person you can be an evil person and from a sexual standpoint you will be victims of the same thing are we learning now this is very very powerful it is a cancer that has destroyed society destroyed great destinies it is a cancer that has destroyed people from ministry to business to politics noble people have crashed down sometimes overnight because of this like i said the goal is to expose us to it not from a standpoint of condemnation but to give us enlightenment and to supply us with the tools that will keep us strong are we together let me tell you this no man will ever outgrow the temptation of sexual immorality no man will outgrow being tempted that that is that is the point the devil will come once and again for as long as you are alive because he knows that 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 nature is in every man that desire that god put so satan will be up and doing creating scenarios and creating any and everything that will exploit that provision and for one who is ignorant and not equipped with scripture and with revelation eventually you will be a victim is someone learning it is a spirit i i in in researching for this i came towards some statistics i don't even want to go and talk about right now very terrible statistics that are not very very friendly and not very funny but then i studied something in dealing with this subject do you know that speaking within the context of sexual immorality the way this spirit works is that once you are a young and unmarried person the devil the spirit of loss acts by amplifying to an unusual degree are we together this desire that god put generally everything god gives man he gives you power and control over whatever seems to go beyond your control has been empowered by another spirit are we together now so the way the devil pushes once you are unmarried without a spouse he will amplify to an unusual degree and there may be biological explanations i don't downplay you know research of medicine we're not discussing medicine now this is from a spiritual standpoint i know there are things like hormonal imbalance and the rest i don't want to go into those discussions are we together but that generally speaking he will amplify that desire beyond the control of an individual and if not protected by wisdom revelation and some of these keys i will show you you will find out that you will be a victim and then the moment you get married he will now flip flip the uh, the side of the coin by taking away that desire so you find out that you can see two people who sometimes are in a hurry to get married because they think they don't they want to keep themselves and then they get married statistics will tell us counselors and even men of god will tell you that sometimes once it happens you find out that that desire seems to just evaporate and vanish it is all the structure of this spirit is someone learning now very very important 
now beyond just sexual immorality there are other expressions of immorality pornography masturbation all kinds of perversions sexual immorality may be the major issue but there are many others you see the thing about the thing about sexual immorality is that it is it requires a number of conditions for that to happen number one it is atmosphere dependent number two you will need the mutual consent of the parties involved but for things like pornography and masturbation these things do not need this all these extra things so there are many people who for some reason have been able to survive sexual immorality but pornography masturbation and a lot of other bodily vices do you know the bible says a man that looks at a woman to lust after her in the mind of the spirit he has already committed immorality so there are others who may not physically act it out but as far as god is concerned they are victims because it is a state of perpetual emotional entertainment just like sexual immorality pornography masturbation and so on it does not care whether you are a man of god it does not care whether you are married it does not care whether you are single it does not care whether you are young it does not care whether you are old if left unchecked it will attack and wreck your life is someone learning now scene number one sexual immorality and related perversions there are other expressions of immorality is still under the group of immorality drunkenness drugs every kind of harm that is inflicted in the body that is inconsistent with god's pattern are we together so there are some who will say well i'm not sexually immoral but then there are people who are victims of drugs victims of alcoholism victims of all kinds of vices that's why it's written here sexual immorality and related perversions i need not mention other extreme ones unfortunately but it is true in the world and i hope and pray not the church extensions of extreme cases like having affairs with little children and babies and animals and sodomy you know that our world today is full of all kinds of things the goal is not condemnation the goal is to be able to expose this and to bring us to a point where we become free and free indeed because i can tell you many people are not free are we together very quickly so that we'll deal with the other things I want to give you five steps five scriptural steps to be free from sexual immorality and every related perversion and i want you to please listen and learn for yourself and for anybody god may give you the privilege of helping are we together number one for you to be free from lust and immorality the first thing that must happen to you is that you must admit it psalms 51 and verse 17 brokenness is a necessary requirement if you are going to experience the salvation of god on this wise it says the sacrifices of god i hope you know psalms 51 was the psalm of david when prophet nathan came to him and to tell him what had happened to him he was broken repented crying with sackcloth and ashes and this was part of his contemplations it says the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise admit it you must come to that point where you admit it listen let me tell you the truth by the privilege of god's grace i can tell you i have cried with and prayed with many people and do you know there are many people you see who are victims of sexual immorality and on further examining they have very sincere hearts some of them grew up from families where the first place they had that that was wrong was even in church because it was a common practice there are cultures that promote it as part of the cultural activities is that true so it is very difficult that's why in dealing with people 
you must never throw away the place of compassion and mercy there are people who were left they grew up on their own and by themselves they became victims of sexual exposures even before teenage some were victims from those they grew up under that trusted them now there's no point bringing sad memories but the point is that for you to be free from lust and sexual immorality and any expression of it you must get to a point of admittance that i need help my life needs the mercy of god step number two very quickly if you are learning say amen, amen. step number two you must set aside time for a retreat as soon as possible set aside time for a retreat a retreat gives you the platform to pray to study scripture to fast and to be broken and repentant before god your maker can i tell you this i think it was i can't remember the man of god now I was listening to years ago and he said any weakness unaddressed will eventually bring you down it is not the weakness it is leaving it and assuming there is no problem is someone learning now you must set aside time for a retreat a retreat is a time alone with god can i tell you when you are dealing with something this cancerous nothing should be too important you can't say i am too busy because this sustains the potential i'm going to tell you the, do you know the assignment of sexual immorality i will tell you the assignment of sexual immorality is not is not the sex that destroys you there is something it does to you spiritually when the devil wants to attack you there is a a, a threshold level of spiritual fire that if you possess it cannot allow for a demonic attack and so the way that it happens is to introduce this to your life and it begins to bring you down to a level spiritually where an attack upon your life any dimension becomes possible are we together one of the things it may interest you to know is that there is a strong relationship between the spirit of immorality and the spirit of untimely death there is a strong relationship so number one admit it with humility and brokenness crying to the god of your salvation number two a retreat is your next port of call a sincere time alone with god to cry out your heart before your maker in prayer in fasting in genuine repentance when jonah went to nineveh and announced to them the imminent destruction that was coming upon them the bible says immediately the king of nineveh declared a fast everyone fasted till the animals and all of them wore sackcloth and ashes and cried before god the thing about god is the moment there is brokenness his mercy is ready to come is someone learning let me recommend a scripture for you that you use for your retreat psalm 51 the whole of psalm 51 is the psalm of mercy this was the cry the pouring out he said have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression and then he says in verse 2 wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin verse 3 it says for i acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me verse 4 against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest verse 5 it says behold i was shaping in iniquity look at the psalmist pouring his heart before god and saying listen this uh, this was a tendency that has been fighting me for many years he couldn't find expression because i was not yet king can i tell you you need to cry for God's mercy because there are many people who are not victims of this. Not because the devil is not attacking you. The opportunity that gives you room to execute it has not yet come. And the spirit of loss can lie quietly for decades. Waiting for the day you are exalted. I can tell you what came upon David. 
did not come upon him in the palace. It was there right from when he was in the bush. Who will come to you in the bush when there are lions and the rest? Are we together? So that this immediately should damage any sense of self-righteousness. Of believing, oh, I think I'm fine. Uh-uh. There are many people, if you are exposed to one-tenth their conditions, you will fall like a pack of cards. Koinonia, are we together? The purified bride. So number one, you must admit and acknowledge that you need help and the mercy of God. It does not matter whether it happened through your carelessness, giving into the flesh. It does not matter whether it's a product of an attack and a spirit. It does not matter whether it has come as a result of foundations and ancestry patterns. Look at our dear sister, the woman who shared this. You see that her legs were broken, same position, same time. The sister, the same thing happening. There are strong demonic patterns. Let me tell you the truth. Except you deal with this by revelation. You can be a man of God. You can be a leader. You can be a father. You can be a businessman. That spirit from its ancestry will haunt you. Until you use spiritual intelligence to deal with it. Number three. Help now. Number one, I said, admit and acknowledge it, your need for help. Number two, you must set out time for a personal retreat. A time of honest appraisal. Flog it out with destiny, with all sincerity between you and God. Number three, where it persists and is still beyond your control, you must seek help. You must seek help. You must be honest enough to seek help. You must seek help now let me pause here for a minute and just comment very quickly i'm dwelling on this issue of sexual immorality because i just want us to deal with it a little bit before we now discuss the rest it's a very serious issue do you know please look up do you know that in seeking help i submit to you that there are many people who desire to seek help but the reason is history has shown that especially we men of god have not sustained the kind of intelligence and maturity to manage people's private and painful issues. Is that true? There are many people who have been wounded because they came and opened up to their prophet, their man of God, and said, listen, I think there is something I'm struggling with. Prayer partners, accountability partners, mentors, men of God, have in many regards disappointed the trust that people have had for them that is the reason why you see today people have resorted to flying abroad and going to go and meet therapists at least who will deal with it professionally and don't even know you rather than coming to cry to say man of God I think there is a challenge in my life many of us will pray and say oh let's pray father the devil cannot take over this person and later on before evening you have told your wife as a spouse you have told your husband ah, this is our prayer group my God God is bringing a lot of deliverance. You see the problem now? And then the person will tell another person and say, don't tell anybody. I would deny, I don't know you when anything backfires. Let me tell you the truth. It takes more than being anointed to help people. You must be trained. We must incorporate this in our mentorship platforms as we build people. Anointing and revelation is not the only thing that qualifies for spiritual leadership. People must sustain psychological knowledge, the maturity and the know-how to manage sensitive things. Some of these people are in positions where managing and dealing with these issues can have severe effects on them, their organizations, their platforms. You're a man of God here listening or within this place. We must know that when people open their pain up to you, it is a trust you must protect. Are we learning? But I want to tell you this. Help is powerful. It is amazing how something that looks like a mountain can be deflated in the presence of genuine help. There are people who are carrying spirits. So counseling will not solve the problem. 
counseling you may walk around counseling and say okay this positive confession you will speak that in jesus name i'm okay and that spirit will just wait at the door of the counseling as soon as you are coming out it, before then it has gathered seven others that's what the bible says and it will land on you in a way that you cannot imagine that's why whether it's sexual immorality or people who are on drugs when you are talking to them have you seen how quiet you just keep quiet will you smoke again no will you drink me no that's the last time by evening do you know how this spirit works even if they travel to a region where they don't know anybody the spirit will coordinate a way they must know who sells what it's a spirit so number one admit number two a retreat set aside time to pray and fast and study scripture and cry out your heart in genuine brokenness and repentance before god number three if and when the need arises seek help seek help from matured people your pastor seek help from your spiritual father seek help from mentors people who have demonstrated maturity to be able to handle those issues number four very quickly key number four is what many people avoid and ignore and it is the reason why their deliverance is not complete number four create rules and boundaries in and around your life create rules and boundaries in and around your life proverbs 25 and verse 28 please 25 28 proverbs he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls create rules when you enter a relationship with your spouse intended to be create rules agree and pray and say in the name of jesus christ will keep this relationship pure up until marriage create rules don't allow your emotions to suggest from beginning settle it that by the grace of god as god grants mercy this is how it will be if you're with me say amen, amen. you must create rules and you must create boundaries in and around your life it's not enough to repent before god it's not enough to now be renewed in your decision there are systems that you must create especially for sexual immorality sexual immorality is highly atmosphere dependent you cannot stand and sleep with somebody in front of a police station or in front of a law court the atmosphere is not right may be difficult to sleep with somebody when Don Moen is playing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please write, please write. Let's, let's get to work. There's a lot for us to do. Don't just laugh. I hope it's entering you. Tonight, there is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. Are we together? Pay attention, please. So... The final encouragement for you is connect to a larger family of believers. Community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, amplified. Please give it to us. Hebrews 10, 25, amplified not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as many believers as is the habit of some people but admonishing warning urging and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching it says not forsaking the assembling of believers when you connect to a larger body of believers it can help you preserve your kingdom values are we together yes very very powerful and important so let me run through the step finally that to be free from the spirit of lust sexual immorality masturbation pornography and all kinds of vices whatever it is the first thing is you must admit that there is need for help number two you must be able to set a time of retreat of brokenness repentance before god number three seek help number four 
you must create rules and boundaries in and around your life and then number five connect to a larger family of believers has god helped someone please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cry to the lord father i obtain mercy preserve me go ahead and pray preserve me preserve me if the message has hit you and perhaps your life has been that way do not be discouraged remember the one who god loves is the one he chastises lord i obtain grace someone is praying i obtain grace deliver me from sexual immorality deliver me from lust for you it may not be sexual immorality but how about lust ungodly thoughts that roam around your mind seeking for an opportunity to be executed you can live and walk in freedom please pray you are praying from the depth of your heart for some of you is drunkenness alcoholism some of you drugs and all kinds of vices the purified bride must be free from this don't say it does not matter the purified church must obtain grace from god please pray doesn't matter whether you are a pastor apostle prophet god can give you a new beginning provided your heart is open to cry you are following online you are watching from any nation i like you to pray this is not a message unto condemnation it is a sincere admittance that will lead to purity holiness and lift you to a higher level of spiritual exploits someone is praying lord show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy i cry unto you you may want to extend that prayer to someone you know and love lord show my spouse mercy probably lord show my husband my wife show my children mercy show my parents mercy show my pastor mercy show my 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 ceo mercy show this politician mercy it's not a time of condemnation the fall of one is the fall of all the rising of one is the rising of all we are a body that is interested in our corporate growth i like you to pray from the depth of your heart pray for everybody you know prayer groups churches ministries pastors leaders politicians heads of government no one no one is beyond being tempted with sexual immorality no one is beyond being tempted with other immoral perversions it has nothing to do with being good or bad pray that those who are bound by any and all kinds of addictions let it be broken in the name of jesus you are praying for yourself and you are praying for them praying for the body of christ hallelujah in jesus name i pray sin number one that the body of christ needs to be purified from sexual immorality and related perversions sin number two i'm giving you seven very quick the second sin that the body of christ needs to be purified from indeed the church is lost for money and material things please write it down lost for money and material things philippians chapter 3 let's hurry up please from verse 17 to 19 the lost for money and material things it says brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have for an example uh-huh i'm trying to make sure that i pull these things mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 and verse 36 yes what shall it profit a man is it in your bible if he gains the whole world that's a business terminology and loses his own soul this is another cancer that is sweeping the body of christ and we need god to show us mercy we are victims of it as men of god as churches as believers the loss for money and material things first timothy chapter 6 please and verse 6 to 10 lost for money and material things first timothy 6 6 to 10 but godliness with contentment the bible says is great gain for we brought nothing into this world please look at me 
Have you ever seen a naked baby come out of his mother's womb holding dollars or holding gold and say, I came from heaven, leave my thing for me. Everybody comes naked. And have you ever seen a dead man who is departing? And as soon as they are burying him, he just reaches and draws his gold chain to his grave. It does not happen. From birth and at your point of transition, you are empty. This should give us wisdom already. Are we together? Let's finish up that scripture. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh huh. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Nine. Watch this. It says, But they that will be rich fall into temptations. I'll explain this for you. And a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. Verse 10. For the love of money, the word there is eros. An ungodly affinity and attachment to money is the foundation of every kind of evil. It is the strengthener of all kinds of evil. He said, which while some coveted after have erred from the faith and have passed themselves through with many sorrows. Please look up. I believe in prosperity. It is God's desire to bless his people. Materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials upon your relationship you see the bible tells us that god and mammon this spirit that controls worldly wealth that it seeks for allegiance money does not just want to end up in your pocket money wants you to end up in its pocket are we together now yes when our entire sermons our entire lives our entire conferences our entire conventions with all due respect and honor to the body of christ when everything becomes about money you cannot hold an evangelistic crusade and right there before souls come we're talking about money there is no business between evangelism and talking about prosperity principles that should be in a believers conference those who have now been saved then it is part of the growth process that mentors and builds them hallelujah some of us here as you are looking at me you can kill because of money are we together yes our affinity for money you can have 10 million in your account if 10,000 is missing you can go around even in the night with torchlight to sleep and wake up in the morning you will not wait till it's morning you must complete that 10 million 10,000 affinity material things this has controlled who and what we marry this has controlled who and what we get money can call you leave nigeria and come to uk can say no 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 go back again money controls people around the world like a remote control listen let me tell you the truth i have taught you on financial principles it is not sarcasm god wants to bless us but not by becoming so emotionally obsessed and attached with money there are people the moment they became wealthy they told their wives from today you will not stay with me go out into the other room because i don't trust anybody i've suffered too much <laughs> listen to me you can be prosperous lay up gold as dust beyond your wildest imagination and yet not be attached to it the goal of bringing this right now is to be able to teach you that God wants you to prosper. Marketing poverty as a sign of holiness and piety is inaccurate. No. If poverty were good, some of it would be found in heaven. And since there is none of it found there, it means it did not come from there. Are we together now? So I'm not teaching you from a standpoint of an irresponsible man of God who is unmindful of the reality of the times. I understand. And there are scriptural strategies. And for as long as I live, among the many mentorship um, teachings that you will receive is empowerment. I am vocal and I am unashamed and unapologetic about the blessing of God's people. It's a sermon I will never change till I see his face. My assignment is to balance you, to see to it, that it does not become obsession because we need to balance this 
for many believers our obsession the reason why we go to church and the entire scope of our christian pursuit is money is the reason why people can steal people can do anything because of money and sadly in many christian circles respectfully speaking the major index for measuring faith is wealth so if your faith is working let me see it by the car you are driving if your faith is working let me see it by the house if the man of God, if there's, it shouldn't be. While we continue to reject poverty, we must cry and pray that God will grant us grace, even by his mercy, to be people who can look at money. Is the reason why many believers compromise. Someone will dangle one million and you say, ah, I rather enjoy it now and tell God sorry later. The body of Christ needs to be delivered from lust, for money, and material things. Sin number three. Is God helping us? Let me tell you the truth before we go to number three. The cure for lust, for money, and material things is number one, to be properly mentored on the kingdom's pathway. To wealth and abundance you can do well to listen to my teaching the power to get wealth we have done several teachings along this line you would observe in that teaching that i taught you that the first law the first spiritual law for wealth and abundance is not tithing it is not giving the first law is the law of absolute surrender until you are dead to yourself, dead to the flesh and alive unto God. Your obeying business principles is simply bargain and investment you are doing with God. So there are many people who bring tithe and bring offering as a bribe, as an exchange. God, you better see it, I'm dropping it. And you drop it and go back and say, God, I'm waiting. And God says, what do you really love? The money or me? The law of absolute surrender. They gave of themselves first the Macedonian church and then they gave of their substance. So now number three, are we learning? The third sin that the bride of Christ, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, must be purged from is the sin of witchcraft and extra biblical practices. Please write it down. This is the third. This one is a very serious one. Is God blessing us already? show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter deuteronomy chapter 18 let's hurry up from verse 9 the third sin that the body of christ needs to be purified from is the sin of witchcraft and extra biblical practices when thou art come into the land which the lord thy god giveth thee reading to 14 it says thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consultant with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer Verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. 13, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. In fact, we can stop there. Are we together? Exodus chapter 13. Exodus 13, let's start from verse 1. Ezekiel 13, I meant to say. Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel. Chapter 13. 
And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, verse 2, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. And say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirits and have seen nothing. Verse 4. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the deserts. Uh-huh. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up for the hedge of the house of Israel to stand in the battle, you know, in the day of the Lord. Verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord had not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Verse 7, we're reading to 10. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken. Verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord. Verse 9. It says, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies and shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord thy God. Verse 10. It says, because, even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace. And one built up a wall and lo, others have daubed it and on, with untampered mortar. Let's add 11, the last verse. It says, say unto them which daubed it with untampered mortar that it shall fall and shall be an overflowing shower. And you know this and that. He was rending judgment upon them. The prophets that lie. The word prophet there does not just mean prophetic office. It includes any and all men of God and any and all leaders in acts chapter 16 a very popular scripture you know about that from verse 16 the bible talks about a young damsel who had the spirit of divination give us acts 16 16. we're reading to 18 and it came to pass that as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination possessed with what a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by suit saying the same followed paul and us and cried saying look at the accuracy of her prophecy these men are the servants of the most high god was it a lie which show us the way of salvation was it a lie that was the best summary of the assignment there and yet the spirit that was behind it was the spirit of divination the bible says and deeds did she many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and the spirit came out the same hour please look up let me tell you the truth it is no news and it is nothing to shy away from that not all who name the name of christ not all who are involved in ministry and spiritual leadership are sincerely from god there is no need it is not about prejudice or biases but let me say this there are people who have mixed the baby and the bath water and call everybody who prophesies everybody who works miracles anybody with an unusual manifestation of the grace of god upon his life it is easy for society to brand you and to say there's something wrong with you it is amazing how we say we believe in God. It is amazing how we say we believe in all the miracles that happen in the Bible. And yet when they happen here and now, we are afraid of them. It means we never believed it. Are we together? It is no news that many people... Let me tell you this. I teach the school of ministry that when it has to do with purity of vessels, there are three kinds of people. Number one, there are those we call the pure breed. Those who sincerely love God and have walked in keeping with the divine patterns that make for the purity of ministry. They have not soiled their hands with divination or any satanic thing. Number two, there are those who are innocent and sincere. Their call is genuine. But wrong mentorship or pressure or ignorance led them to go and fraternize with groups, associations or mentorship platforms that introduce them. So these are people who are not evil. They are only corrupted. 
then the third category are people who from the inception they were not of god are we together now so it is important to create this divide do not watch anybody walking supernaturally in the power of god or prophesying or with an unusual dimension of the operation of the spirit and just brand them and say these are demonic it is not so if jesus were alive and he walked on earth would have called him heretic as the scribes did are we together look at the many things jesus did he spat on the ground would you sit down for a man of god even jesus christ what kind of a jesus who spit on the ground and rub it on your eyes and say go to a river it, does that look like compassion he didn't even lead me there and yet the bible says he leads me beside still waters now he's sending me and saying go by yourself are we together many times we love jesus just because he's not here if he comes to the earth after one week many of us will be tired and say go back we don't understand you again but i can tell you the truth by the authority of scripture and the evidences that scripture show that there are people who have fraternized with all kinds of dark powers and and demonic things now let me tell you this please look up in the kingdom it is not all about results the pathway that leads to that result is how god is glorified not the result in itself there is a way you can practice healing practice deliverance practice your faith life in a way that it is an extra biblical practice the believer is bound to the provisions that scripture allows are we together now all things are lawful but the bible says all things are not expedient that means to be a sound man of god it's not about clamoring for acceptance but it's important to limit your operation ministerially and in any kind of spiritual leadership to the provisions that the bible allows now the truth is that if you are a man of the spirit you are going to be led of the spirit and sometimes you will be led of the spirit in a way that may be strange to the natural man i must tell you that but you see the beautiful thing about the holy spirit is that the purity of his leadership to you will be known by those you are those that you are manifesting no matter how strange it is they will have a witness of the spirit that you are not acting based on the influence of a spirit of divination for instance there is no instant maturity in the bible people do not become matured instantly so for you to be greatly used by god there must be a track record of growth even if you are called into the prophetic and the apostolic ministry there is no instant maturity nobody comes out of nowhere the bible is full of the pathway for spiritual growth and manifestation there must be a track record of growth and Jesus increased, Luke 2, 52, in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and with men. The way we have marketed ministry, especially with the gospel of wealth and abundance, unfortunately, is what has driven Nigeria and even Africa into the search, especially the apostolic and the prophetic, because they seem to look like the most charismatic of the fivefold. If I say I am an apostle or a prophet and I prophesy, chances are that somebody can give me a car in one day, can give me a building in one day. Are we together? Someone can come to see me, maybe a governor or a president, man of God. Now that is election time, should I go and most times the man will not come alone. He may come with honorarium to come and, and, and greet the prophet of God. And that honorarium can be serious. He can carry a man's destiny and give him one day so many people because of that i'm not being sarcastic many people because of that when they fail in every other area of their life they say do you know what this thing i am tired have you noticed that every time there is a corruption in the prophetic the apostolic or spiritual leadership the end result is always money material things fame i want a name i want everybody to know i am the person sin number